guys. Receive my greeting from wherever you are. So today we have um, our first example here. Okay. So here I'm having an impact testing machine. Okay. Or impact or chappy testing machine. So there I'm having my sample there. I've tried my best to try and cut the machine and try to explain how it works. So here it's in the plane x, y, all right? So it's a movement in the plane. Okay, and there is my arm, which will be released, and after it has, it has been released, it will come and strike, and strike the sample, and then to break the sample, okay? The aim of this machine is to determine the toughness of the sample. We all know that toughness is a characteristic of a sample or a material to absorb energy. Okay, so to resist to fracture before to, to resist to fracture or deform before getting fractured. Okay, so to absorb energy, it got, it gets deformed and then it does not fracture or it gets deformed before it, it's fractured. All right. So yeah, I'm having this mass here hanging on the arm, which is the uh, the mass plus the arm, which gives a total of 15 kilogram. Right, and then. That is my distance from the oxidation point, the, the point of oxidation, up to the center which will strike the sample, which is 0 0.8 meter or 800 millimeters. All right. And then there is my angle V, which is 143 degrees. Without wasting any time, I'm going to give you the principle how it works. Okay. So, first of all, we need to know. So, it will go like this. It comes, it comes, it comes, it comes, it comes. Then, it strikes the sample. There in front of you is the actual impact testing machine. So there you can see your sample is placed there on the black pot there. And then you can see your mass is hanging there. What you do is you release the mass. It strikes the sample. Then there is our angle there. And you hold us. So you can read your juice there on the scale that you see there. And then, yeah, this is how it operates in actual life. Thank you. Okay. So here is the formula. For you to get the energy, the toughness, that is expressed in joules. So it's energy. So there we go. You take the differentiation of energy, which equals to energy 1 minus energy 2. All right. And we know that energy is expressed in joules, all right, which says, which means that we need to take the force in Newton multiplied by the distance in meters all right so here here we go so now i'm having this uh length here my length is 0 0.8 meters which i can consider to be a radius because you can see it so it's like a radius of a circle and we all know that a full circle a full circle has 360 degrees Okay, or to pi right. All right. So here, what I'm going to do is to make it simple. I'm gonna say because when we talk about two pi, we talk about the circumference. So if you want to get the circumference of a circle, what we do is we take the radius times two pi. Okay, and remember this two pi here. Is equal to 360 degrees okay so yeah if you want to get this part here which will be considered considered as the the the, 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 the distance here how this is how we get it so the distance here the distance will be equal to r times 140 Degrees, okay, divided by 180 degree times pi. 180 degree, why? Because if you take this two, you divide, you take 360 divided by two, you give 180 degrees. So then, here, this is what I'm getting. I'm having 0 0.8 times 140, 143, sorry, times pi over 180 which gives me um, 197 millimeters okay 
So my energy one here, yeah, my energy one here, yeah, which is from that point there to this point here yeah, before it struck or after it has struck my energy one there is force. When I'm talking about force, I'm talking about the mass times the gravitational acceleration, which is g equal to 10 meter per second squared. So I'll take m times g times the displacement, which gives me uh, 15, sorry, 15 times 10 times 1, 9, 7. A good calculation here, sorry. So I'm going to have 15 times 1, 9, 9, 7. I'm getting here 299.55. So almost 300 joules. So that is 300 joules. So from V to there is 300 joules. But now remember, so after it has stuck, and then this sample absorbed the energy, okay? And then it went that size with 10 degrees. So this is the energy that it absorbed minus that displacement there, which means the sample was struck and then the mass went over that side there. So energy two, energy two will be equal to Again, the force times displacement, but this this time displacement, displacement prime, prime, sorry, and displacement prime is equal to ten this ten degree here, multiply by pi, multiply by r, which is zero eight, because the same, it's the same radius zero eight divided by one. 80, which in return gives me, sorry, 10 times pi, 10 times pi, times 0, 8, over 180, it gives me 0 0.13, uh, 0 0.14, yeah, simple, millimeters, sorry, meters, so now my energy here, so energy 2 will be equal to force, which is 15 kilograms times 10 times 0 0.14, which gives me 15 times 10 times, times 0 0.14. It gives me 21 joules. It gives me 21 joules. So now, my toughness here, my energy will be equal to 300 minus 21 joules and this one is equal to uh, 70 sorry 279 joules 279 joules so this is how you get your toughness all right actually it was a, a pleasure of mine to share this video with you i hope that you guys enjoyed it and uh as i always say if you haven't subscribed please subscribe because you're gonna have to learn a lot here and uh for now i'm gonna ask you to take care of yourself and uh hey don't forget to share if you feel like this need to be known to other people as well and uh don't forget to like remember because this is a uh this is done in mechanical testing in uh physical metallurgy uh labs or mechanical labs so for now i'm gonna ask you to take care of yourself and bye